Hal Lindsey. Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Hal Lindsey Report. Well, this week marks the fifth anniversary of the Hal Lindsey Report, and I had planned to select from a number of reports that we've done over the last five years that marked how events fit into the prophetic scenario. And I thought we had some good things. But then the a crisis exploded all over the Middle East, and we decided that we had better get to work on what's happening there now and what are the implications. So tonight, we're going to seek to uh, analyze where this is leading. Now, we're not a news organization like Fox or CNN, and we're, we're not trying to mark events minute by minute. We don't have that capability, and that isn't what we seek to do. But what I am going to do is seek to analyze what's going on and how that's going to affect Israel and especially the United States and how what's happening around the Suez Canal may have global implications. But first, let's review how these tumultuous events sweeping the Middle East began. It all began in Tunisia in mid-December. A street vendor in the small town of Sidi Bouzid was humiliated by a female police officer. His vegetable cart and scales were confiscated. So Mohamed Bouzizi went to the provincial headquarters to complain. But after being ignored by officials, he bought a can of gasoline and set himself on fire in front of the government building. Bouzizi died of his burns on January 4th. His desperate act triggered a wave of defiance that spread across Tunisia until finally, on January 14, Tunisian President Zini al Abedini bin Ali stepped down from the presidency. Even now, protesters in Tunisia continue to demand the complete replacement of the government. That unrest began spreading across the Arab world. Demonstrations erupted in Libya, Algeria, Jordan, Yemen, Albania, Lebanon, and most recently, Egypt. Like Ben Ali of Tunisia, Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak has maintained control for 30 years by ruling with an iron hand. Assuming power after President Anwar Sadat was assassinated in 1981, Mubarak suppressed both conservative Islamic factions and liberal democratic forces. With the blessing of Egypt's military, the truly dominant influence in Egypt, Mubarak maintained the peace with Israel that was forged by Sadat and Menachem Begin in 1979. While Mubarak struggles to maintain power in what has been one of the most stable countries in the Middle East, the constant power struggle in Lebanon erupted again following the nomination of the Hezbollah-backed politician to be the new prime minister. Demonstrations broke out when it became clear that Hezbollah's candidate would win. Protesters seized an Al Jazeera news truck and ripped it apart before setting it on fire. Yemenis are revolting against the 32-year rule of Ali Abdullah Saleh, in large part because of Saleh's cooperation with the United States in the war against Al-Qaeda. In several Algerian towns, including the capital, Algiers, riots broke out after a steep jump in food prices. Five Algerians set themselves on fire. More than a thousand were injured during the clashes between the protesters and the police. Reports from Libya have Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi considering the possibility of a threat to his 40-year iron rule. The growing sense of anger and popular unrest in Jordan is noteworthy. Jordan is the only other Arab state besides Egypt to enter into a peace agreement with Israel. In Jordan, 70% of the population are Palestinians and the memory of Black September 1970 remains fresh with the Palestinians. On January 21, thousands of Jordanians took to the streets of Amman to protest against the government. They were egged on by the powerful Muslim Brotherhood. Agence France Press Bureau Chief Randa Rabib wrote, what started as a spontaneous movement by common people who were concerned about rising food prices has been hijacked by the Islamists and the unions, transforming itself 
from a social movement into a political movement. This space is 